So here's a question. How do you blame the pandemic for not being able to get your message out when no one actually knows what your message is because you don't actually have a message? If you're wondering what I'm talking about, we're talking about Keir Starmer. And, you know, just a trigger warning for you guys, there's going to be a hell of a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of memes and a lot of references you might not understand in this video. And you know what? That's fine. Because if you need to know, I can explain them. Anyways, Labour have blamed the pandemic for, um, so someone within the Labour top team has blamed the pandemic because it stopped Starmer getting his message out, um, despite the fact that the internet exists and he could have used social media a lot more. Um, <laughs> and the fact that, you know, now they're saying that, well, the pandemic stopped us from getting our message out. And also we're doing a policy review on our policies and our message. So which one is it? It can't be both. You can't blame the pandemic for not letting you get your message out and then say, oh, you know, we're going to review our message. The, the two the two don't work together. This is ridiculous. Labour have been unable to set out its vision for the country because of the pandemic and the Shadows Home Secretary has said, with the party brace for further knife edge results over the weekend. So this, this article just before uh, Khan won the mayoral election. Um, so important mayoral, mayoral elections could prove further difficult results for the Labour leader. We know that um, there was one race recently, um, an MP won it. So there's going to be a by-election in her seat. Also, um, Sadiq Khan recently won the mayor, London mayor election and Andy Burnham won his mayor election with a bigger mandate than he had done before. So it does show you that if you run on a message, it can help um, more so in Manchester than so in um, London because Khan did struggle quite a bit, but turnout was very low. But Labour is expected to fail uh, for, fail to defeat the West Midlands Conservative Mayor, um, Andy Street, which we know is the case. He won by a decent margin. Khan won his seat his uh, mayoral lace but we see here from you know nick tim thomas simmons who is the i think he's the shadow home secretary um said the pandemic had restricted opportunities for the labor leader keir star but we've seen boris johnson around we've seen him talk to people so no nah, i'm not buying it i'm not buying it you know the comms team as you know we're going to talk about that in a minute they should be um they should be sacked as well they've done a rubbish job um but here we go at a point of a national crisis, this is Nick Timothy uh, Simmons. Um, of course, you criticise the government when it's appropriate to do so, but it was appropriate to support the government on things like the furlough scheme. The furlough scheme that left out um, self-employed people and um, freelancers. You know, they struggled to get any help. You know, How loud were you there on those issues? That's an area where you could have gotten support, but you didn't because you didn't speak much, did you? Or support the government on its public health messaging and not... Uh, for not for political uh, party political reasons tried to keep confusion around that that's fine um, Starmer did try and push for earlier lockdowns but again he has to get this stuff out on social media far more aggressively so then people can see the dates and say look I told you on this date you need to go into a lockdown for these reasons you need to do x thing for this reason but you didn't did you um you know what what that also has meant is that it restricted the opportunities for Starmer to set out his vision how do you set out a vision when you don't have one you don't have policies what what's your philosophy on brexit you know what's your what's your policy on um getting rid of the patents for vaccines etc what what do you fundamentally believe in what is starmerism we knew what jeremy corbyn was about we knew he wanted to nationalize certain key industries we knew he believed in helping poorer people we knew he believed in higher taxes what does starmer actually believe because we're told he's a Europhile, someone who fundamentally believes in the EU and stuff like that, but he hasn't pushed for closer alignment with the EU. He hasn't pushed for anything. So this this argument they're making that, you know, it's the pandemic's fault. You know, when are you going to take personal responsibility? Keir Starmer said he takes responsibility for the losses, but he hasn't. He's thrown everything under the bus. But he's saying, oh, I'm taking personal responsibility. Uh, gets rid of uh, Reina, demotes her, demotes Annalise Studs. You know, this guy's a joke. T um, Nick Thomas Simmons said there would be significant policy review within Labour. So again, how do you say that we need a policy review, a significant policy review within Labour, and also say, oh, it's the pandemic that uh, that stopped us from getting the message out? Which one is it, you idiot? Economically setting out all the difference, all, all the difference that we will not go back to the insecure economy of the past and reimagine the economy, our economy, you know, and you're going to talk about the burning injustices as well, like Theresa May, and not offer any policy specifics. What a joke. Um, and also make sure that we are changing our party so that our uh, party is connected to communities up and down the country. You've had a year to do that, pal. That's the challenge we are determined to do, to do it. You've had a year to do it. You haven't put out anything. 
You know, the, the Conservative Party constantly, you know, put up propaganda about a northern powerhouse and northern investment, etc. But you guys haven't offered any policies to help the north of England, the de-industrialised areas or places like Hartlepool. How are you going to get employment back up there? Um, the Conservative Party said they're going to move certain offices up there to help out and do investment in those areas. What are you guys going to do? Labour. Honestly, you know it's bad when the Conservatives are offering better policies because by default, if you offer a policy that's a 1 out of 10, it's better than a policy that doesn't exist. The Environment Secretary, George Useless, said Labour had taken voters for granted but also acknowledged the party was capitalising on a push through Brexit and the vaccine rollout, something that you know the Labour Party refuses to talk about Brexit and the vaccine rollout, which obviously the uh, Labour Party don't have much of an impact on regardless. Um, we go here, this is with Labour insiders saying that the early emphasis was on eliminating the negatives, in particular the strain of anti-Semitism within the Labour Party, but Labour have struggled to deal with racism and refuse to release things like the Ford report that's meant to look into uh, racism within the party. So clearly you care about anti-Semitism because, you know, people, the broader public saw, you know, anti-Semitism is bad and the Labour Party are bad for dealing with, not dealing with it, but when it comes to other forms of racism, you clearly don't care. Uh, insiders say the party performed worse than inter internal polling, which means that maybe their internal polling has to be looked at. Uh, while the pandemic has blunted Starmer's ability to oppose the government outright, that's not true. He has had opportunities to oppose the government, he just hasn't taken them. Um, that's not true at all. One of them one of them told us that Starmer's task now is to incinerate the politics of the far left. You know, this is a guy who ran his leadership campaign on, you know, keeping most of the 2019 manifesto. So whoever this person is, is an idiot. Meanwhile, some on the far left are calling for radical change. He has to start offering policies. That's what I've been saying for about six months now. And the fact that people are finally getting it does tell you that, you know, certain people within the Labour Party are very stupid. If some punk on YouTube is telling you what you should have been doing six months ago, maybe I'm Captain Foresight and Starmer's Captain Hindsight because I've been telling him this. Um, Starmer has stressed his patriotism and accepted the Brexit deal. You know, he's talking about how, oh, I believe in the flag and I'm a real patriot and all this stuff. Who's that going to resonate with? You, you might get some, you know, working class, white working class people on your team, but you're just going to alienate minorities. Because what does the flag represent to minorities? Ask him. A prominent politician who spent time campaigning in Hartlepool blamed the hollowing out of the party uh, during the Corbyn era. Of course, we're going to blame Jeremy Corbyn. With strong organisational and as much uh, as much as political expertise and experience lost, uh, as far as I know of, Starmer has got rid of some of the grassroots organisations from the Labour Party. So this person, another fraud, um, another who spent a lot of time on the town's doorstep said the party was afflicted by the phenomenon known as Long Corbyn. So how long are we going to blame Jeremy Corbyn for? Are we going to blame him at the next election? Are we going to blame him at the election after that hmm and if Corbyn was such an issue why was Starmer in his shadow cabinet ridiculous these people absolute frauds the lot of them one from Buncher said at least people weren't angry at, with Labour anymore they just particularly weren't inspired either so you can't blame Corbyn then if people aren't angry at the Labour Party because Corbyn's gone and they're not inspired that's your fault then because you're not offering policies you're not offering inspiration with anyone <sighs> this he ass assessed was a weird election where people were interested in vaccines and lifting of restrictions you know they weren't interested in um, local investment or anything like that no all right then people ask me is the Tory Slee stuff cutting through the honest answer is virtually nothing is cutting through maybe because you're not laying it out for people clear enough to understand why these things are issues maybe because you picked a, a, an ardent remainer in Hartlepool maybe that was an issue as well hmm maybe uh, others heap blame on Labour's candidate in Hartlepool, Dr. Paul Williams, and how he was chosen on a one-person shortlist from... She, he's This guy is a friend of Jenny Chapman, who Starmer has done everything to protect so far. First, But first, Williams had to apologise for sexist um, social media posts from a decade ago. Then the Conservatives accused him of playing a part in decisions that removed services from Hartlepool's hospital, though he pointed to his recent efforts to bring them back. So this guy was a poor candidate, um... You know, and Labour should have been running on, look, this place, they've lost, you know, um, certain, you know, hospitals, a &E and and stuff. We'll bring them back here. But they didn't. And somehow the Conservative Party keep getting away with social cut uh, with cuts to services, despite the fact that, you know, they're the ones doing them. But then they keep promising to bring them back, even though they got rid of them in the first place. Maybe Labour need to be explained who has been in charge of the country for the last 11 years. Maybe. Um, Williams was chosen from a one person shortlist. Again, super sus. Super sus. 
Um, he campaigned for Remain in the referendum and lost in a nearby seat in the last general election. So why they were running this geezer, I have no idea. Clearly, this was this was this guy was his mates with Jenny Chapman, and that's the reason why Jenny Chapman, an advisor to Starmer. So so stupid. Um, several Labour MPs from different wings of the party are blaming Starmer's political secretary, um, Chapman, for the decision. One told us he is her mate, but putting him in was a mind-boggling decision since Hartlepool is the centre planet of Brexit. So again, you know, people within the inside of the Labour Party knew this was stupid, yet they still went for this. You know, they still allowed this to happen. Jenny Chapman still allowed this person to be chosen from a one-person shortlist. So Starmer needs to hold some responsibility here because she's an advisor to him. Honestly, one council uh, leader in the north of England told us the party um, nationally is just saying to people, I'm on your side. We're not bringing stuff forward to really transform the lives of the people in the north. So no policies then. The party still looks and sounds like a metropolitan. Again, you know, if they have no policies, they're not going to appeal to metropolitan middle class um, people. It's a dog whistle from certain people who who just say, oh, the Labour Party is for the elites, you know, the, the bleeding heart liberals and all this stuff. You know, it's just, it's just so stupid, some of the takes people have here. He confided he has raised a lack of message for the North with the leadership. It's just like banging your head against a brick wall. So this guy's seen it. This person has seen that, you know, Labour have no message and therefore can't appeal to anyone. Yet Labour are persisting to go ahead with this road. That the policies are, you know, the policies are the problem, but the Labour Party keep banging on about other things being the problem. A message or messenger... An MP who campaigned in Hartlepool and various council contests had a confession. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me to recite precisely what the message is because I struggled to tell you that. You know, the reason we lost 2019 was the fact that one of the main reasons was that there were too many party promises. You know, the manifesto was too long. In this case, they've gone the complete opposite and had no manifesto, no promises, no policies. This is fairly bland vanilla messaging that seems aimed at maximising the minimum number of people who will offend and appeals to absolutely no one because there is no message. It's milk toast cent um, neo uh, centralism, not centralism, but you know, sort of that you know, oh, you know, we're for good things and against bad things, that kind of philosophy. Those involved in the election campaigns from all sides of the party report Starmer has not made enough impact. Many are understanding and like him. I, d I don't think so. People get a sense of who Boris Johnson and what he's about. Um, the problem with Keir is that people don't have a measure of him yet. I mean, he's had over a year. He's got to make some sort of impact by now, surely. Um, I, I'm not asking him to, to go out loads, but do something. Um, this chimes with the view among in Starmer's office that the pandemic prevented him. Again, the pandemic hasn't really prevented him, though. He has social media. He can go out doorstepping. He's allowed to do that. How much of that has he done? And the thing is, if someone asked him, you know, what do Labour stand for? What's he going to tell them? Because he hasn't got any policies. You know, this person here talking about how um, politics is a battle of wills and ideologies like some sort of Rocky film. Is this Rocky 4? Is this Drago versus um, versus Rocky? Is, is that what this is? Uh, is, is, is this uh, about is the song Burning Heart? Ridiculous. An MP who is by no means on the left of the party confesses, I just don't know what Starmer stands for. A Labour colleague of theirs from North England reports this from the doorstep where people comment that they think he's boring. He doesn't stand for anything. He's boring. He's a wet blanket. You know, some shadow ministers tell the difficulties of getting access to the leadership, um, whether it is to give advice or get attack lines signed off. So that means this, this, little, this little thing here, right? Let me put this in a different colour so you understand. This, this little segment here shows you why this is Starmer's fault because if it's the case that everything had to go through Starmer to get signed off right what that means is Starmer has to hold absolute responsibility for this because everything went through him and his office his team who chose his team Starmer did so that what that line tells you is that Starmer is at fault for this loss and no there's no way to sugarcoat it there's no way to sugarcoat it. If that's the case, that these shadow ministers are telling the truth here, Starmer is completely to blame. They are privately calling for changes to the engine room, the leader of the opposition's office, and can't agree to them. You know, they're asking him to, to make ch changes, they're asking him for help, and he's just not giving anything. Um, you know, Steve Reid uh, was sent around the, um, the broadcast studios on Friday morning to assert the problem wasn't Starmer, but the party. Maybe I'm not out of touch. It is the party who's wrong? Such a joke. Such a joke. All, all of these, all of these people who've been quoted here, the ones that are back in Starmer, absolute jokes. The lot of them. 
um, we go to an opinion poll here, and this is asking people why they did not vote Labour at this election. So let's have a look. Starmer, Keir Starmer um, slash leadership, 14%. Do not agree with his policies. Policies not clear. I wish they made that two questions rather than one. Um, can't be trusted with the economy. Poor economic record. That's not his fault. You know, that's that's from 08. Um, general, generally opposed. They're, they're people. Some of these people are TFGs, too far gone. You can't get them. But, um, you know, local ca issues, poor candidates, you know, that could be from Hartlepool. That would be um, a reason not to vote. They don't share his values. No chance of winning. So Starmer couldn't convince, you know, 5% of people polled there was a chance of winning. You know, and if, if you know there's people who say that, oh, the Labour Party is too woke, that's why they won't win. Only 2% of people said they didn't vote for the Labour Party because they're too woke. Not for working people. Anti-Semitism. Brexit at 1%. So again, because this man had no policies, you can see that, you know, what's that? 20, what's that? 25%? Of people, a quarter of the people polled said Starmer is the issue. Starmer and his lack of policies are the issue. Don't let them blame anyone else because we know that's the truth. We've we've put it out there very painfully that Keir Starmer has no actual policies. He's the problem. This is from Lena, someone worth following on Twitter, saying that Labour should be sacking their comms team. To be fair, they should be because their comms team suck. You know, they're not pushing social media that hard. You know, they're not pushing YouTube that hard. They're not pushing these platforms that much because they're not trying to appeal to younger people they think that either younger people aren't going to vote or the ones that do they have in the bag you know we've seen the success of the green party they, they got a load of new votes during um the local elections you know, figure out what's making the green party so popular do something man honestly um andy burnham says he won all of the red wall seats in greater manchester lay burry bolton haywood and middleton voters will return to labor if you offer them a program for change that will improve their lives he said better transport you know he's talked about nationalizing the buses better jobs better homes you know these are actual policies or proposals at least and then you can give the specific policies how are you going to improve transport are you going to nationalize it are you going to do maybe a public option where you know there's a um a public run company uh, by the taxpayer that's meant to compete with private services is that what you're going to do because in my town there's about two two actual buses bus companies that run there's three but the third one's a minor one realistically the second one's a minor one as well they have a monopoly in the town so at that point what do you do do you try and nationalize the bus service in my town or do you try and introduce competition what do you do in that situation um, because the public transport in northampton where i live is a joke you know at least here and andy burnham Offered something. What did Labour offer? Anything like this? No. Rachel Shavi, you know, a brilliant person. Again, another person well worth a follow, saying that to blame Corbyn, COVID, shadow cabinet, the vaccine and big cities. Not to blame the Labour leadership and his political operation. Absolutely spot on. Um, Lewis Goodall saying that Labour MPs are completely gobsmacked tonight. Considering how bad the results were, things were relatively calm in the Labour Party until, uh, well, just now. Clear from early conversations with figures on the left of the party, what well, they considered this move incendiary. This is the move to sack um, Angela Rayner, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. But what a joke this is. Um, it's like the Labour right wanted to take control of the party just so they could finish off destroying it, which absolutely feels the case. Um, because they are going to murder this party. Death, Not death by a thousand cuts, death by about 15, it feels like. Owen Jones talking about how it's a disaster to scapegoat Angela Rayner, which Starmer has done, really. He's offered a, you know, a secondary position as the um, the shadow cabinet member of the um, Dutch Duchy of Lancaster or something like that, um, which is a joke because that's you just basically man-marking um, Michael Gove, who doesn't actually have a position with the cabinet. That guy's been declawed as well. So you've offered Rayner a nothing position because Gove's position is a nothing position and now she's going to have to deal with an absolute spin merchant in Michael Gove that's going to be very difficult I think for Rayner to do so it's a very stupid thing and I think he's set up Rayner for failure you know and if we actually look here you know Labour haven't actually gone through with some of these but we know Annalise Dodds has been demoted um, Lisa Nandy um, was going to be demoted but then there was a massive backlash about that the reason why Starmer wanted to demote her because she ran against him for leadership and she posed the problem like are you Stalin looking at Trotsky right now thinking ha huh, that's the leader of the Red Army over there even though Lisa Nandy is very much on the centre right are you saying oh she's got a big following best get rid of her now absolute clown John Ashworth I actually like him you know he's all right and Nick Brown I have no idea who Nick Brown is and promotions West Streeting he's the one that's star does um 
damage control for Sama, Rachel Reeves, um, a person who has praised a Nazi sympathizer because she was the first sitting MP in um, Westminster, which is a joke. Why would you praise someone who is a who? Why would you praise someone who has praised a known Nazi sympathizer? Ridiculous. Um, Jess Phillips, proper bleeding heart liberal. All right, on you know mostly women's issues, unless you're a trans woman. So she's a bit of a joke. You know, she's the one that said that she'll stab Corbyn in the front, not in the back. So. Well done getting her in. You want to get rid of Lisa Nandy because she might stab you in the back, but you want to keep Jess Phillips, who is all about Jess Phillips. Sarah Jones, I have no, no idea who that is. And Steve Reed, I, I don't know who that is either. But you can see that you've got more kind of centre-right figures coming in. Uh, Rachel Reeves is now the... Um, she's the uh, meant-to-be-shadowing... Um, the exchequer so that's rishi sunak she's the one that said um a few years ago that labor was going to be tougher on benefit cheats than um the conservative party are so yeah you know, good good choice good choice starmer you know this is andy burnham saying he won't he can't support you know the sacking of angela rayner or sort of the demotion of angela rayner um starmer has sacked rayner from her roles as the party's chair and national campaign coordinator so if, if Starmer wanted to blame her for the failure of campaign coordination, okay, but what were your policies? What was she meant to push out there? Because you offered nothing. You offered absolutely nothing. And this could backfire on you. This could absolutely be your mirror force right here. Your own attack will be your downfall. I activate mirror force. Reina's status as deputy leader is safe um, as that is directly elected post, but the move has reignited Labour's civil war as MPs and activists reacted with shock and dismay. Um, the Momentum Chair said this is blatant scapegoating, which I agree with. It's his failed strategy, Starmer's failed strategy, that has brought us to this point, and he said he will take responsibility. Yet again, he's gone back on his word. Starmer and Rayner, who have said to have discussed her future on Saturday, with the Labour leader urging her to take on a different role in the wake of the Hartlepool loss, because he didn't want to make it out like he sacked her. That's why he wanted, to take her a wanted her to take a different role. You see the spin here, people. Um, and a poor performance in local elections across much of England. You know, he's he's, bla he's blatantly blaming her for it. Rayner start and start. Uh, we mentioned that. Um, there's a lot of pressure to sack her from MPs and from staff. Well, they're a bunch of cowards then. They're a bunch of cowards because this isn't her fault. Through MPs. And how are you going to get the support of Northern England when you're going to sack a Northerner? You're going to blame a Northerner for your failings. Honestly, um, though MPs contacted by The Guardian on Friday singled out other key figures to blame, including Jenny Chapman. So, you know, Jenny Chapman is a person who clearly members of the Labour Party blame. So why hasn't she been sacked? Hmm. Labour's, uh, so Clive Lewis, Labour MP, saying the fear is the leader's office is now head a headless chicken and looking into the void. We need calm and considered um, and considered. And we got this, you know, forensic. And people are saying when the autopsy happens, it's going to be phenomenal because Mr. Forensics is going to do a bang up job on this. I think Clive Lewis, if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm right, he ran on um, being Labour leader, and I think he would have done a much better job than Starmer. I think I would have done a better job than Starmer. I think you, whoever's watching this video, would have done a better job than Starmer. It really looks like they will trash. They will thrash about like Alan Partridge pitching anything for a second season. One Labour MP who backed Starmer for leadership um, was gobsmacked, um, saying it would erode trust that Starmer could respond rationally to the election fallout. You don't say I take full responsibility and sack your deputy as party chair. Absolutely. One Labour MP said they saw the move as a way to pin blame on an internal rival rather than a loyalist such as Steve Reid or Jim um, McMahon, but said female MPs would go batshit. Because he's he's basically got rid of a load of women. You know, he was going to get rid of more. But the thing is, he has promoted some women as well. So maybe that argument wouldn't stand as strong. But he blamed Lisa Nandy. He blamed um, Angela Rayner. And he blamed Annalise Dodds for his failure. Uh, let's not forget that. Uh, Rayner was given little input in strategy decisions. MP said, this is the, f the wrong fight to have. So he's blamed Rayner despite the fact that he was little help to Rayner, and we also know that he didn't offer anything policy-wise, and the fact that he's a very hard person to get a hold of and actually get any output from. So, is this Rayner's fault, or is this Starmer's fault? I'll tell you, in my opinion, this is Starmer's fault, as I've mentioned, but you let me know in the comments. One Northern MP said Rayner did bear some responsibility. If she's chair of the party and head of campaigns, she needs to take some responsibility. Yes, she does, but... What was she allowed to do in her position? Because we know Annalise Stodds didn't have a lot of leeway. She pushed out that weird green bond idea um, where, you know, people would invest in green energy via government bonds. Who cares? Who cares about that? 
You know, that was a Starmer and Dodds policy, yet Starmer, um, Dodds got most of the flack for it, despite the fact that they come up with the idea together. So I question how much of how much leeway did she actually get from um, Starmer. If Keir is serious about reform, he needs to put some someone in the role who knows what they are doing. So let's see it then, because he's put Annalise Dodds in charge of that. So if Annalise Dodds wasn't good enough to be Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer, and now you're trusting her to run um, campaign coordination, sick one. It was unclear what alternative role would be offered to um, uh, Reina. We know that she's been offered the Shadow Chancellor of the um, Duchy, and she's taken it. Um, you know, we keep going here. So we know Annalise Dodds has been um, sacked or sorry, demoted. She will now be the party's chair, replacing deputy leader Angela Rayner, which they've said like this is a kind of promotion, which again, it just doesn't make sense. Miss Rayner will instead re replace Rachel Reeves in shadowing Michael Gove at the cabinet office. So she, you know, again, Michael Gove doesn't have an official job at the cabinet office. He's just there to help people and so they can keep an eye on him. He's also good for spinning, you know, government lines and um, on the media, in the media. Um, that's something we'll talk about when we do the Scotland video. But, you know, they've given her a role of man-marking someone who's just elusive and he does whatever. So, Rain has basically been, you know, she's on a wild goose chase chasing after Michael Gove. Um, you know, there's a bit more... This is the last one. Reshuffles are moments, this is from Laura Koonsberg, reshuffles are moments when leaders have the chance to assert their authority to show that they are in charge. Even the most ardent of a political obsessive would acknowledge, probably, that opposition reshuffles are not necessarily noticed by the public, especially when we don't even know half these people are. Keir Starmer's first reshuffle, however, has been a messy affair because he, he, he knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to get rid of Dodds. He's wanted to get rid of Annalise Dodds for a while. This is his excuse. He might have wanted to get rid of Raina sooner. We don't know. Um, who was the third one? Nandy. He probably wanted to get rid of Lisa Nandy at some point as well. He's done that. And he's done it in a messy way because he got rid of Raina. He got rid of uh, Dodds. But he didn't get rid of Lisa Nandy because of the backlash. If I were him, I would have said, look, we're going to go through a review. And a few months time, I would have said, look, um, we're going to switch. Uh, we're going to, you know, we've put Raina in a different position because we felt like she was better off marking Michael Gove. And we're going to have someone who has more expertise in running campaign coordination. That's how you could have spun these things. But instead, you know, after a, a really bad local, some really bad local election results, you decide to start throwing people under the bus and you've made... Rayner, the scapegoat. Rayner, who is the closest, I think, representative of the left that we have within the shadow cabinet. And the question I'd ask Angela Rayner was, was it worth it? Was it worth it when you had to go on TV and you had to say, oh, you know, we're offering the nurses a 2% pay rise because we know we offered them a 5% pay rise in the 2019 manifesto, but people rejected that manifesto, uh, that manifesto. So we don't want to go higher than 2%. Did it, did it feel good, Rayner? Did it feel good when you had to sell out like that? You know, there's, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of respect for her. After I saw that, I was like, you're a sellout. You're a joke. You sold out for a bit of power. And how does it feel that you have been put out on the scrap heap? Honestly. Her allies said that she was being sacked by Starmer and Keir's team said she was being moved. They can't be both telling the whole truth, which is true. She, she's been sacked. You know, she's been demoted. This is some, you know, Mourinho level. The, you know what? I can't even say this is Mourinho level. Uh... Because, you know, because Mourinho never threw his number two on the bus. Rui Ferry, I think his name was. Mourinho is a master of spin. He would throw his players under the bus. He would blame the weather. He'd blame the referees. He'd blame anything. But he wasn't never this bad. And, you know, he's blamed everything. And if Starmer's not careful, he's going to be looking at a game over screen like he died in Metal Gear or he died in um, Street Fighter. Because this is a joke, man. You know, the Labour Party is looking at absolute, um, an absolute bloodbath in the next election. You know, we might get hit with that Exodia obliterate right now. Obliterate! Because um, this is this is painful. This is painful right here. But anyways, look, I'm going to leave it there. This video has gone on for a long time. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.